Today we'll be solving a question from the International Mathematical Olympiad. This is a question from the 2019 paper and it might seem a bit difficult but it's rather easy. Okay. So we have to find all such functions okay, f such that for any integers a and b f of 2a plus 2 times f of b equal to f of f of a plus b. Okay. So this is a problem from an area called functional equations this is not exactly a mathematical area it just is a section for olympiad mathematics okay uh, but this is a good problem in general even for a j aspirant or any high school or college student uh, so let's think of the ways in which we can go forward right so whenever you come across a question like this your goal should be to somehow write this equation in terms of this f of x because that is what we are supposed to find we are supposed to find f of x right so what can we do here? We don't have much information. We just know that these numbers are integers and we are given one general equation. So one good approach in such questions is to find f of 0. Okay, That is one good approach. So why don't we put a equal to 0 Okay, and we put b equal to some random x. Okay, And both of these are integers. Okay, So this equation will be satisfied because this is valid for all integers a and b. Okay? So let's proceed. So if we put a equal to 0, then this is f of 0 plus 2 times f of x equal to f of f of x. Okay? We just put a equal to 0, b equal to x. So this is one result that we get. This will be useful later on. So now what, what more can we do? So one thing that comes to my mind is to find out f of x plus 1. Okay? If we put value of a as 1 and b as some other x, then we are finding x plus 1. So why did we think of x plus 1? Because this is a function for integers, right? So why don't we try putting another integer, right? The next integer. So f of x plus 1. So if we put a equal to 1 and b equal to x, then this is f of 2 because 2 times 1 is 2 plus 2 times f of x equal to f of f of x plus 1. Okay, I just put some numbers in here. So now we know this equation. So we just put it here. So what is f of f of x plus 1? We, we just plug in x plus 1 into this side, right? So if we insert it here, this is nothing but f of 0 plus 2 times f of x plus 1. Okay, I just expanded this using the value x plus 1. Okay, so we obtain that f of x plus 1 minus f of x plus 2 equal to f of 2 minus f of 0 divided by 2 all right so what do, what is this this is a difference of consecutive values right x plus 1 is the next uh, value of this function because this function is for integers right this is an in a function from integers to integers z to z z is integers right so this is a difference of consecutive values and what is this f of 2 minus f of 0 upon 2 so since this is a function from z to z, f of 2 will be a constant value, f of 0 will be a constant value. So this difference is itself a constant value. So we are getting a function such that the difference of consecutive terms for any x, it's a constant. So what is this? This is a linear function. This is like an arithmetic progression. This is like a linear function, right? So from this value, we can conclude that f of x is equal to alpha x plus beta. It is of this format. This is what we conclude. So we didn't do anything fancy here. It might be a bit confusing, but please try to understand this is nothing fancy. We just are trying to find f of x in some fashion for all integers x. Okay. So one good approach of doing that was to put a equal to 0 and b equal to x because that would eliminate this whole entire mess of a plus b. That is why we are doing this. Then this will be f of f of x and here also we will get f of x and f of 0 is a very uh, typical thing to find out in these kind of questions. So that is why we did the first part. This is pretty obvious. This is nothing too intuitive. And next we notice that uh, since this is a function on integers, we can try finding out the value of the next uh, number to x, which is x plus 1. So here we put f a equal to 1 and b equal to x and we concluded this. Luckily we had this particular equation, so we could uh, solve this one out. f of f of x is something which is a bit difficult to find out. So we were a bit lucky here because we were given this information. But again it's no luck, we just knew it, we just had to manipulate the equations when to get this result. Right? So we know this much. So now what is the value of this uh, alpha and beta? That is what we are supposed to find, right? So I will rub this off now. 
So why not we insert this value into this function? Okay. So what is f of two a? So x is equal. So we here are yeah. So f of two a is alpha times two a plus beta. We are just putting two a as the value of x here. Okay. This much we have concluded. Now we are trying to find alpha and beta plus two times alpha b plus two beta. Okay. I just did two times of f of b. Equal to f of f of a plus b. So here, so f of alpha times a plus b plus beta. Take it. Uh, I hope it's visible in the board, right? All right. Now to conclude this, we again have to apply this variable into this equation. So alpha times alpha times a plus b plus beta plus beta. Okay. So now we will club. So okay, let me simplify. Then I'll remove you know, both of such clubs. This one can be eliminated now. Equal to uh, alpha square a plus alpha square b plus alpha square b plus beta. Okay. Oh, I think there was a bracket here which I forgot. So this is alpha beta, right? This is not alpha square beta. Alpha square. Yeah. Okay. The calculation is right. So now remember that this is true for all integers a and b, right? So no matter what a and b we choose here, these the equality has to be maintained, right? Which means that the coefficients of a, b, and the constant terms have to be equal. Okay, let me explain it in some other ways. So we can say it something like this: see, a times alpha square minus two alpha. Okay, I just club the terms of alpha together, so a together. Plus b times alpha square minus two alpha plus beta beta will cancel plus alpha beta minus two beta equal to zero. So this equation has to be true for any value of a and b. So we can put any x y z value of a and b. This equation has to be zero, which means that all the three terms of this equation has to be zero. Right? That is the only way we can. Get this uh, equality to zero in all cases of a and b. Okay, this means that alpha square minus two alpha. Or if I simplify this, alpha times alpha minus two equal to zero. This is the same equation. And alpha beta or beta times alpha minus two equal to zero. Okay, so we have to solve these equations. So this can imply that alpha equal to zero or alpha equal to two. And this will imply that beta equal to zero or alpha equal to two. So in the first case where alpha is equal to two, in that case any value of beta will satisfy the equation. So beta can be anything. Beta can be anything. This is the first solution. Okay. Second solution is where alpha is zero. If alpha is zero, that means alpha is not two. Then beta also has to be zero. So this means that alpha equal to zero equal to beta. This is also another equation. So to conclude it all, what you find out is that. f of x is equal to two times x plus any number n. Okay, beta can be anything. So it is a linear of the form two x plus n, or f of x is zero. You can try plugging in these values. This function will be satisfied, and these are all the possible solutions. Okay. So now some discussion on this problem. This is the solution. So first of all, if you didn't understand how we are doing this, this is completely fine. This is an IMO problem. This is supposed to be solved in one point five hours by the smartest. Uh, of you know of the high school category, so uh, it is not something that is hundred percent obvious. But again, if you look back at it, it was it was a doable question. It was not something completely out of bounds for anyone uh, with a decent instruction in mathematics, right? So in functional equation, finding or plugging in zero is a very standard operation. If you are given multiple variables, then Putting one variable as x and other as zero is often a good way. Now here we were asked for integers, so f of x plus one was that was how we found out f of x plus one, and then we just compared the uh, then from that we were finding out that the equation has to be linear. So the, sorry, the function has to be a linear function, and from there we just come we just and another result that was used was that a times alpha plus b times beta plus c equal to zero. If this is satisfied for any value of a and b. That uh, any value of alpha and beta, that means a, b, and c all have to be zero. This is another result that we use, which is from uh, linear algebra. I don't think it's something too complicated, right? So, if you like this question, you can subscribe to the channel, and I also teach uh, J 
uh, and Olympiad Math. So if you're interested in learning J, Physics, Chemistry, Maths from me, then you can check the link in description. I also have a Mathematical Olympiad course that is also linked in description. I have free J notes. I have a lot of things going on in the description. You can check them out. And that is the question. It was a doable question and it was probably one of the easiest questions in that paper. This was problem number one in IMO uh, 2019. So first problem is usually the easiest one. So, but again, I think this is a pretty doable question. This is not something out of bounds. Okay. Thank you for watching. Good luck.